Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tokyo. And if you love the Escudo, you've been using the wrong Suzuki. This car will, by the end of this straight, be first. And before it hits its brakes, we'll be doing 220 miles per hour. And after the first pit stop, he's going to be set on racing soft tyres. So this isn't a glitch where we're going to be wall riding or sat on sports tyres. No, we're going full bifter racing tyres. This isn't a glitch. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a purely legitimate car. And if you want to know what that does for your lap times, look on the right hand side there. 157s, 158s. And you can cross the finish line in less than 25 minutes. And I'm a B ranked driver. And I did it in 24.49. So if you're better than that, you can go even faster. Normal clean race bonuses are back. Just don't crash into the other cars. So, to get this car, you need to buy it from the used car dealership if you don't already have it. It's peanuts, it's probably about 20 grand or something. And then, we're going to take it to GT Auto. And you're going to put the wide body on, and you're going to get the engine swap done. Just going to change the oil here. And that'll take it from its normal engine and put an RX7 engine in it. And that's going to give us this massive power boost up to 565 horsepower in a car that weighs 691 kilos. So, first up, wheels. Any wheel you want, don't really matter. I've gone for this so it looks like the Escudo. Uh, and you want wide offset wheels. Very important, just gives you a little bit extra width on your tyres, which helps with your grip when you're in the corners. Like I say, any tyre you want. Next up, we go into custom parts. And we want the Type B spoiler on the front. You might be able to use Type A, not too sure. Uh, for the side track, you want Type B. For the rear, there's only Type A. And then for the wing, I've got a custom wing on. You might be able to use Type B, not too sure, but that's what I've gone for. So that's wings dealt with. Next pit we're going to go to is racing items. So I've got bonnet pins on and tow hooks doesn't really matter but this does roll cage type C for some reason messes around with your PP not too sure why it probably increases rigidity um, but make sure you have that on dead important next up we're gonna head over to the tuning shop and we're gonna put the following parts on first up you want weight reduction stage 1 this is the start of taking us down to that 691 kilos next up We've got weight reduction stage two, and then we're on to semi racing, and we want the fully customizable computer. High RPM turbo for those of you who can't get ultimate parts, fully customizable LSD, increased body rigidity, and weight reduction stage three. In the racing parts, we've got engine balance tuning, polished ports, racing intercooler, oh, don't forget the anti lag, racing intercooler, air filter and silencer and exhaust manifold you want racing brakes brake balance controller fully com customizable suspension racing flywheel and clutch fully customizable racing transmission racing medium and racing soft tires intermediate tires in the extreme and then if you have these parts in the ultimate section you want the carbon propeller shaft and the ultra high rpm turbo doesn't matter if you can't, high is enough. And if you put the intermediate tyres on last, that should bring you out at 551 pp. Right, set up. You're going to want to start on the racing intermediate tyres. We'll get into that later. Uh, you're going to want fully customisable suspension. Set to 120 at the front, 140 at the rear for the ride height. Anti-roll bar, 9 at the front, 6 at the rear. Compression. 35 at the front, 38 at the rear, expansion, 45 at the front, 48 at the rear, natural frequency, 2.8 at the front, 3 at the rear, negative camber, 3 on both, and toe angles, you want 0 on both of them. The LSD, you want fully customizable, and 5 on all of them. If you're struggling with the oversteer, you can turn them up. Downforce, 100 at the front. 300 at the rear don't have to mess with the computer gears set it to 300 
make sure you've got your fully customizable on. And then first thing you want to do is set your final to 3.5 and then you'll be able to go through these numbers. So 118, 179, 238, 310 and 430. And you'll get up to 230 miles an hour with that. Uh, Anti-lag, you want that on weak just because we've got that ultra high RPM turbo on. And the only other bit that we can customise is the brake balance controller. That's up to you. The rest is just the parts that we've put on. Right, let me talk strategy to you. This is going to be a two stop race. So your first pit stop off those racing intermediates, because they'll burn out straight away, is just come in on the end of lap two and swap to the racing softs. No fuel, dead important. If you don't fuel up and you do the lap times right, you should still come out in front of Gallo which is dead important because you're on racing softs and you do not want to be off the racing line. Next up, you're going to be changing out your burnt out racing softs and you're going to come in at the end of lap six to change onto racing mediums. If you save your tyres enough, you might be able to eke out another lap, but if you can't, just come in. You're going to want to refuel on this one. You just top up to six and a bit laps and that'll get you to the end. And by this point, no one's near you, so you don't need to worry about overtaking people on the wet. Your tyres will burn out towards the end, but as long as you have good control of the car, it shouldn't be too much bother. Right, let me show you what this car can do. So we're at the end of the race, lap 10 complete, going on to lap 11. Racing medium tyres, got a tow off to Swillow and Gallo, going as fast as we can down to the straight. Tra track's drying up. Let's go for it. So our braking point is going to be the gantry just before the turn. Braking now. I'm going to stay on the brakes until we just about get into the turn. Turning very, very gently and then letting go of the brakes. And then hopefully not losing control. Accelerate out. Braking again straight down to 80. And then softly, softly on the power until you straighten out. And then floor it. Coming down to turn 3, you're going to want a tap of the brakes and let go of the accelerator then accelerating at the end of that white building. Same again for this corner, keeping it tight, otherwise it'll knock you out to the outside. And then break in between the 150 mark, bring it down to 100 mile an hour, taking us down to turn seven. You're gonna to wanna to break before the bridge, bring it down to about 120 mile an hour, letting the car rotate around the corner again, breaking again for turn eight, same again, it's just long sweeping corners, so you just let the car rotate round to the end and then fair on the throttle. Same again, between 150 mark brakes, letting it roll round. This one you just can let go of the accelerator, let it roll round about 100 mile an hour, and then that'll take you down to the final hairpin. Now you're going to want to brake on this next bit just as the corner straightens out. I hit the brakes too late, so I do the anchor manoeuvre. Just let the wall take some of the speed off from it. Rotate round, rotate round, as soon as I hit that dry bit, accelerate. Try not to keep traction on the car, and then accelerating out. It made no bones to the lap time, you can see there, last sector 0, 0.0 gained. And then we're taking it all the way down to the end, and that'll bring us over the lap time for a 1.57.0. This is a little monster of a car. If you ask me, it's in a league of its own. It beats every other car by 40 seconds. It's just an absolute little pocket rocket. No other car comes close. So there you have it, folks. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment if you want to see any other cars in this, and we will see you all next time.